If you're looking to produce a podcast or start streaming, but something like the Rodecaster Pro 2 is too much for you, yet something like a simple basic interface is just not enough for you, then that's where you might want to look at the Focusrite Bowcaster 2. And so right away, I do wanna let you know that Focusrite did send me the Vocaster 2 to check out, but I don't have to make a video about it or say anything about it or do anything with it. However, I am making this video because I think that this thing is really awesome. I am so impressed with exactly where this fits because for me, the Rodecaster Pro 2 is my audio interface mixer recorder of choice. But I also recognize that as much as I love the Rodecaster Pro, it's also a little much <laughs> for some people. Not everybody needs everything that the Rodecaster can do. And so on the other end of that spectrum, you have simple audio interfaces, like this is the Focusrite Scarlett Solo. While the Rodecaster Pro 2 retails for about $700, this retails for just a little over $100. It's one XLR channel. And while these are great, they're also pretty basic. It's essentially just a way for you to get XLR microphone audio into your computer, and that's it. The Vocaster 2 sits right in between those. So with a retail price of $300, you get two XLR channels, not all of the full functionality of the Rodecaster. You don't have onboard recording or smart pads or onboard EQ or four channels or all of those you know crazy added features that the Rodecaster has, but you also have a lot more than just sort of one or two basic inputs. And so I think there are a lot of people out there where the Vocaster 2 will be the perfect choice. And as you can see, it doesn't take up a ton of space. It's relatively small. It's built really nicely, by the way. The casing is plastic and it has sort of this like speckled appearance on it. But it's kind of cool because that is recycled plastic. The knobs and the dials feel really nice. Focusrite's always really good about making everything feel really good on their interfaces, and this one is no exception. And then you also have some buttons on the front here. There is also an app that goes along with it, so we're going to talk about absolutely all of that. Right now you're listening to the Sennheiser MKH-50 running directly into my Sony FX3, and now you're listening to the Shure SM7B running through the Vocaster 2 into Adobe Audition with no effects and no processing. This is just a dry signal, but there are some basic processing effects available on the Vocaster 2, so we'll talk about those in just a little bit. Now I wanted to start with the SM7B because it is a really popular microphone. It's a great sounding microphone, but it is also, as you might know, notoriously quiet. It typically needs a lot of gain or something like a Fethead or a cloud lifter in order to really have the signal that it needs to sound its best. The Vocaster 2 has 70 decibels of gain built in, and uh, this is what the SM7B sounds like running into that with no boosters or anything. I could increase the gain quite a bit, this is full 70 decibels. I'm definitely clipping there, so we're gonna roll that back a little bit. And also just for fun, we're gonna talk about the app more in depth later on, but right now the app does have an auto gain feature where I'm going to switch back to the Sennheiser. I click on auto gain and then the app just asks me to talk into the microphone. It cuts out the audio, but it just has me talk into the microphone at my normal speaking level. And then when it's done, it will automatically adjust the level of the microphone. So now this is what the Vocaster Hub has decided is the best level for my voice on the SM7B. I think that this is too quiet, so I'm going to boost it up a little bit. It put it at like 55, 60%. This is a very quiet microphone. I'm going to boost that back up to really more about like 75%. And I like the way that this sounds in terms of levels. And if I stop talking, you can hear how noisy it is. There's definitely a little bit of noise, but overall it's pretty quiet. You could probably easily get rid of any existing noise with a microphone like that using a noise gate or something along those lines. But let's talk about everything the Vocaster 2 has to offer because I didn't really understand it before. I thought it was just sort of a flat Scarlet, <laughs> and I was wrong. It's totally wrong on that. The Scarlet, as I mentioned earlier, is just an interface. It lets you connect microphones, get that signal into your computer to do whatever you want with. The Vocaster 2 does that. So you can use this with anything, any of your streaming software, Ecamm, OBS, you can use it with Zoom, Riverside, StreamYard, anything where you need to select an audio input or an output, this can be that. 
Unlike the Rodecaster Pro 2, this is not really geared at all towards music production. Not that you couldn't connect a microphone and record vocals or find a way to, you know, mic up a guitar cabinet or something like that. This is really geared towards spoken word. And so looking at it from that perspective, it is laid out really nicely because if you're in kind of this setup right here, you've got your computer, your microphone, and the Vocaster. It's not like too cramped together. It's very easy to control everything. You have three dials on the front. You have a host monitoring volume and a guest monitoring volume. The host monitor is also, if you have any monitors connected to the Vocaster, this is where you would adjust that level as well. The giant dial in the middle is to adjust the gain for the guest and the host. And then you have a little control panel down at the bottom that has basically the same controls for the host channel and the guest channel, channels one and two. And they include a mute function. So if I push that and you missed that amazing joke. There is also an enhance button because the app does have the ability to enhance your audio. So if I turn that on, it's going to add in whatever type of enhancement you might've chosen. I'm gonna turn that off for right now. And then you can just press the guest button to select the guests channel and then guess what? You have the same thing, the enhance button and the mute for the guest. And now when you're on the guest channel, that's where you would be able to adjust the guest gain volume. Right now for me, only the host volume is going because I only have one microphone connected. And if I press host, now I can adjust my gain and you can kind of see you get some visual feedback here along this middle ring and it's pretty cool. And the volume meter up on the side also goes from green to yellow and then there is a red clipping section. If you speak too loudly and your audio starts clipping, you definitely want to avoid that. Just go into the red and you're dead. Stay into the yellow to sound mellow. I don't know. There are a few little indicators up at the top. You have 48 volts for phantom power. You have Bluetooth, and then you have USB if it's connected to your USB. This is basically the power light. On the front, you have two quarter inch microphone outputs. So this is for the host and the guest. Very important. If you don't have headphones that have a quarter inch output, you need to get some kind of adapter. These are super inexpensive. Lots of regular headphones usually come with them but it does not have a 3.5 millimeter headphone output. But of course on the back is where we have some of the more interesting things that help this to stand out from everything else. There is a dedicated power switch, which is pretty cool because a lot of times USB interfaces and things don't have that. They're sort of just, they get their power from USB and then they're on, but this you can turn it on or off whether or not you need it. I like that a lot. Of course you have USB-C out, it does come with the USB cable, but it comes with USB-C to USB-A. I do just wish it would come with USB-C to C. I figure like that's pretty common now and kind of what people expect. There's Bluetooth on and Bluetooth pairing. There's a 3.5 millimeter input. So if you want to connect hardwire like a phone or a tablet or something as an audio source, you can do that. There's your phantom power on and off. There's your guest and your host XLR inputs. These are not combo inputs. They're just standard XLR pins. You have right and left quarter inch outputs. So if you do want to connect this to monitors, you can do that to monitor your audio. And then this has something that I think is really special because it's one of the most common questions that I get with the Rodecaster Pro 2. There is another 3.5 millimeter output, but it is a TRS output for a camera specifically. So if you want to do a simple video podcast and you just want to take this audio and run it into your camera, you can do that. This audio you're hearing right now is re being recorded into my MacBook through Adobe Audition, but I also do have the Vocaster, which you're listening to right now, running into the Sony a7S III, which is my second camera. I have my gain on the Sony set to six. I'm looking at my monitor, it might be a little low, but this is what that sounds like. I'm gonna boost that up a little bit. Now I've got the gain on the a7S III set to 12, which is quite a bit louder. Depending on your camera, I can't monitor this, so I don't know exactly how this sounds, but depending on your camera, you might have to play around just a little bit to get the right level. Generally speaking, you always wanna use as little gain as possible because by using more camera gain, it's easy to gain noise because cameras, generally speaking, aren't designed to process high quality audio in the same way as something like a dedicated recorder like the Rodecaster would be or an application like Audition or Logic or something like that would be. Let's see, we went from six to 12. Let's put this at eight. Now the gain is set to eight on the a7S III and this is what that sounds like. Still looks like it might be a little quiet to me, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what it would sound like if you did connect the Vocaster directly to your camera. Personally, I do prefer direct USB connections to ensure the highest audio quality, but the ability to run XLR microphones, your whole podcasting setup just directly into your camera, not have to sync the audio, not need any other gear, is pretty cool. Now we're back to the audio coming from Adobe Audition. And before we jump into the application and everything that that can do, I do wanna test out just a couple different microphones so you can hear what those sound like running into the Vocaster 2. 
first, I actually want to stick with the SM7B, but I do want to add in a booster. So the Vocaster does have, like I said, 70 decibels of gain, but as I boost the gain a little bit, you can hear a little bit of noise. So this is the SM7B with no booster. And this is the SM7B running through the FET head into the Vocaster 2. Wow, this is, this is actually significantly quieter. I'm kind of impressed by that. I only have the gain turned up to about 45%, whereas before I was at like 75%. So by using a booster, in this case the FET head, I'm able to use less gain and get a cleaner signal. There is a decent amount of clean gain built into this, but I think that it does objectively sound cleaner and a little bit better when using the booster. But again, this is the SM7B running through the FET head booster. And this is the SM7B with no booster. And again, my gain level went from being at 45% to up to about 75, 80% on the Vocaster 2. But if you're using a condenser mic, then that's not an issue at all because you don't need to use boosters with condenser microphones. So let's switch over to a condenser microphone. So now this is the Earthworks Icon running directly into the Vocaster 2 and being powered by Phantom Power. I only have the gain set to about 50%, 45% because as a condenser microphone, this does not need anything else. I can crank that gain up and then things are gonna get real loud, real fast. The good news is though that pretty much every interface has phantom power built into it. And when you're using a condenser mic, you don't need to worry about using a booster. The downside to condenser mics, speaking very generally, is that they don't reject noise quite as much. This is one of my favorite microphones. I love the Earthworks Icon, but you might notice that compared to the SM7B, you can hear a little bit of the room. If I were in a louder environment, it would probably pick up that noise. Oh, we got some plosives happening there. You can also just take the uh, SM7B windscreens that I get from Reporter Store and just pop that on there and now there's no more plosive problems. But these are both pretty decent microphones that are relatively expensive. The SM7B is $400, the Icon is $500. I do want to test this out on a more budget-friendly microphone. So this is the Samson Q2U running directly in the Vocaster 2 with no uh, booster or anything. And my gain is set to about 60 or 65%. This microphone is not as quiet as the SM7B is, so it doesn't need quite as much gain, which means it is a little bit easier to use with the Vocaster without using a booster, which is pretty cool. I do have some plosives happening. It does come with a little windscreen that you can put on here. There we go, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. This really does help. The price of the Q2U does fluctuate quite a bit, but it's never high. I think at its highest, it's usually like 75 or $80, but I've even seen it as low as 55 or $60. It's a very decent sounding microphone. I think this sounds just fine, but one of the reasons that I think it's one of the best budget microphones out there is because it's an XLR USB combo mic. So if you don't wanna run it through an interface, you can just connect it directly to your computer and be all set. And it even does have a headphone output so you could plug your headphones directly into it and monitor your audio. It comes with this little stand, this little tripod thing, this mount here, and the windscreen, and a little carrying case. I mean, that's, that's like everything you need to get started. And it's a microphone that can definitely grow with you. I think it's one of those ones you could get as like your first legit microphone, work with it for a long time. And then if you wanna upgrade to something else later on, this doesn't have to go anywhere. This can easily be your guest microphone, your travel microphone. I feel like a lot of people who are interested in the Vocaster 2 might also be looking to create a budget setup. And so saying, hey, look, here's a nice $300 interface. Now go get a $400 microphone might be sort of counterintuitive. So it works great with microphones at all price points. It doesn't just need a high-end microphone to sound really good. But I'm gonna go back to the SM7B just because I don't wanna stay hunched over while I'm trying to get close to this microphone. And I also do wanna talk about the Bluetooth connectivity because it's super simple. There's a Bluetooth button on the back of the Vocaster 2. And if you press that, it will turn on Bluetooth and also enable pairing mode. The Bluetooth icon will be orange when nothing's connected. It will flash white when it's in pairing mode and it will just be blue. The Bluetooth thing will just be blue, believe it or not, when something is connected. And so what this means is even though the Vocaster does not have smart pads or sound banks like the Rodecaster Pro does, I can just open up, you know, Artlist royalty free music here. And then via Bluetooth, I can just bring in, there we go. My podcast, this is not my podcast theme song, but it actually 
should be. This song's amazing. Now, the thing with Bluetooth is it often gets a little complicated and a little bit tricky because people want to use it in a bunch of different ways. You can obviously use this just to share audio from your phone to the Vocaster, and that's done through the app. You can't adjust the Bluetooth level on the unit itself. You do need to use the app for that. It does only pair to one device at a time, which is pretty standard for interfaces like this. And at the time of this recording, Focusrite does say that it cannot be paired with a Bluetooth headset or headphones. But you can stream audio from your Bluetooth device to speakers connected to it and both the host and guest headphone outputs. Your Vocaster sends its audio sounds from your computer and the host guest inputs back to your phone via Bluetooth for your caller to hear. So you can use it if you want to have people call in to your show. If you're going to do something like that, just test it out with your specific equipment first, with your device and your phone. Make sure everything's working before you try to just do it live. It always takes a little bit of like fiddling and experimenting to get that exactly right. But it is pretty neat that that Bluetooth functionality is built right in. Let's talk now though about the app. So this is what the app looks like. And as soon as I connected the Vocaster to my computer for the first time, I did get a little browser notification to go download and install the app. So even though it is plug and play without it and you don't have to do it, you definitely want to because it makes things easier. You do have the option to just download the app without registering anything. And you do have the option to not share any of your info when you install the app. So it's up to you to decide if you wanna do that or not. And this is what the interface looks like. It's pretty clean and pretty simple. So I have both of my channels right here. You can see my voice in the host channel. I also have the guest channel, and this is where I can turn phantom power on or off right here. So you can do that here or with the physical button on the back of the device. And that's kind of what you'll find is that everything the app does, does affect the physical buttons as well. So for example, if I turn on the enhance feature here, the enhance light turns on on the Vocaster itself. And if I turn that off here, it turns off in the app. So this is what that auto gain feature looks like. If I click on this, might have to go back to this microphone here, but I just start talking for 10 seconds at the volume that I'm going to be talking while I'm using this microphone. It sort of analyzes that. And then when it's all done, it should bring the gain to a level that it thinks is going to sound its best. I've found that it feels like this is just a little too low. So I'm going to adjust it. And if you notice, I'm adjusting it magically without touching it because the control directly on the Vocaster does control this as well. So I'm gonna bring up the sound of my microphone here. If we play with these enhancements, we have a few different options. Right now I have nothing turned on, but we could turn on a clean enhancement. This is what the clean enhancement sounds like. I definitely prefer the regular SM7B over this. This is what a warm enhancement sounds like. So this is the warm SM7B. This is no enhancement. And this is the warm SM7B. And this is the bright SM7B. It's so bright. Some people say this is a dark sounding microphone. So there you go. This is what it sounds like without anything. And then I can even push it here. This is what it sounds like with that brightness. And then we've got our radio. So if you want to have that broadcasty radio sound, I actually do kind of personally think, at least with my voice and this microphone in this environment, all disclaimers, that this sounds best with the radio enhancement. This is without that. This is just the dry SM7B, probably still my favorite sound. And then this is with the radio enhancement, which actually does kind of, you know, adds a little nice extra spice there. And you have those same things for your guest as well. There's no way to really fine tune those at this time. You just sort of, it's on or off and that's what you get. And down here you have your mix. So you can sort of see that you've got your guest, you can mute everything. You've got the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input and you do have your Bluetooth as well right here. And you also might notice something over here, the loopback mixes. That's pretty cool. So that means that the app has its own loopback built into it. You don't need anything else. So I'm on a Mac and in order to get this and set it up, I need to go to Macintosh HD, go to applications, go into utilities, and then select audio MIDI setup. And now down here in the corner, I can click the plus icon and create a new aggregate device. I'm gonna rename this as loopback one. And then I'm going to select the Vocaster two as my input output right there. And then we can click on the option to configure speakers and I get this very fancy thing right here. And you just wanna make sure that left is set to Vocaster one L and right is set to Vocaster one R. And finally, once that's all done, you can go into your normal sound settings on your computer and then select Loopback 1, the device that you just created. And so now, as soon as I start playing audio from my computer, you can see in Loopback 1, the thing that I've just created, I could create another device the exact same way and call it Loopback 2, and then I have two different mixes. And what that means is, so for example, if I open up Discord right here, not Datcord, but Discord, if I go into my voice and video settings, you'll see that loopback one is something that is available as both an input and an output. So if you want to create 
certain mixes for streams and stuff. If you want to do USB mix minus things, you can decide what is using which version of loopback and then you can customize that to suit your specific needs. Again, just like with Bluetooth, it requires some experimenting to make sure everything's working right, but I do think it is really fantastic that this is just built right into the app. And also the first time I did connect this, it did go through an update process on the Vocaster. I don't know what Focusrite's plans are to add firmware updates or functionality to the app or the unit itself, but that at least gives me hope that they might be able to do things. And then imagine if they did something cool like add in a routing table here, like the Roadcaster has, where just from within the app itself, you can see what things are included in loopback and what things aren't. That would be pretty nifty but usually I'm somebody who really dislikes having to use apps in addition to hardware but this one is so well done and it's just so functional and adds in some really cool stuff that really helps you get the most out of this that I like it quite a bit I'm just super impressed with this whole thing overall and that's why I think this is really like the perfect Goldilocks device if the Rodecaster Pro is too much both in terms of features and price but the Scarlet is too little and just doesn't quite do everything you want to do the Vocaster 2 could be right in that perfect Goldilocks zone. I should add the caveat though that if you want the Rodecaster Pro, don't get something else thinking that you'll be satisfied because you won't. You'll just end up spending more money because you'll buy this thing and then you'll end up buying the Rodecaster anyway down the line. Just save up and get the thing that you actually want. But if you don't have your mind or your heart set on anything specific and you just want something that's going to do a great job for podcasting and streaming and general audio production, I think the Vocaster 2 is absolutely something worth considering. And speaking of things worth considering, thank you to everyone, that doesn't make sense, who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And if you do wanna know a little bit more about that Rodecaster Pro 2 I keep mentioning, check out this video right here.